that's how I was sitting with my whole shirt in my mouth, thinking that Seth Rollins was actually going to cash in the money in the bank. Uh, I thought he was going to, and they really teased it very, very well to the point where he even handed the briefcase. Justin Roberts made the announcement, but the bell never rang. It's always that, always that little loophole you can go through to kind of prevent these things from happening. Uh, the match with John Cena and Brock Lesnar was, uh, it was okay. It wasn't, it wasn't a total annihilation like the last match. It was more of uh, Lesnar is getting his ass kicked, and he kind of cuts Cena off. Cena fights back, gets cut off. Cena had some great, great comebacks, really. And uh, JB, they kept putting home that this is a different John Cena. It's not the same one from SummerSlam. He knows what he, he was, you know, he knew what he suffered. Now it's time to avoid all that. And uh, with that all being said, it was just your typical John Cena match. It's what usually happens is Cena gets his ass kicked, he comes back, and he wins. This one was kind of a little bit. Cena had the offense, and then he'd get cut off, he'd get beat up for about five minutes, and then come back for two minutes, try winning it, but, you know. Uh, Cena this time hit an F or an AA within about 40 seconds, 30 seconds of the match, mm -hmm. much like Brock Lesnar did. And uh, the ending was a great sequence to the point where I thought Lesnar was going to tap in this main event was definitely one of those main events where you didn't know what was going to happen. It wasn't so predictable like a lot of main events usually are in WWE. Uh, SummerSlam 1 being you knew that Lesnar was just going to kill John Cena. And I couldn't even tell you what pay-per-view was before SummerSlam, but I'm sure the main event was predictable. Uh, so pretty much, yeah, this wasn't very predictable. You could have, it could have went either way. People were saying that Lesnar's contract... They kind of change his contract up so you don't know how many TVs or dates he even has. Uh, the beating that John Cena took at SummerSlam, it was only inevitable that he was going to win the title tonight. Uh, there was the thing where Lesnar's going to leave, Cena's going to win, Rollins is going to cash in, which is personally what I thought was going to happen and which they almost teased happening. But none of the above really happened. You knew, For me, I personally knew if they weren't going to do the Rollins cash-in, that the match would end in a DQ, and then you'd have the blow-off at the next pay-per-view in Hell in a Cell. And, but the way they did the, the DQ was not how I predicted. I thought it would be John Cena kind of having the STF and not letting go out for a five, or just Lesnar in the corner and Cena just wails on him and not break the hold after the five count. But nope, they had Rollins run in. Not, I guess it kind of made sense that Lesnar was very vulnerable. He's been in the F STF for so long. And um, he gave him the curb stomp. But end of the day, Lesnar's still champion. He's facing Cena and Hell in a Cell. And here's, here we go again. It's another one of those things that can the good guy, you know, prevail. You know, the WWE formula is always the bad guy beats up the good guy. The good guy gets his comeback. The good guy wins. And he's back on top. John Cena's a good guy. And uh, Lesnar's obviously the bad guy. You don't know what's going to happen. It's very, very unpredictable. And I like that. I like the fact that, you know, half half of the undercard, more than half the undercard is very predictable. To have that one main event where you don't know what's going to happen, it's good. It's, it makes me want to watch. It makes me want to go out of my way to see Hell in a Cell. So, that was, it, was a, it was a fairly decent match. It was a, overall, it was a very decent pay-per-view in general. I enjoyed it. Every match, except probably the Miz and Dolph Ziggler match, um, you know, it was, was fine. The Divas match was a little, you know, actually that, those two matches were probably, actually <laughs> three matches. Mark Henry versus Rusev, the Divas match, and the Intercontinental title match. Everything else was, was fine. And match of the night was definitely the, um, Cesaro versus Sheamus. I like that a lot. Ambrose coming back was definitely a highlight. Lesnar versus Cena had great drama at the end. Um, the opener was just a great solid opener, very fun to get, just start off the pay-per-view. Uh, Rusev, Mark Henry match, it was good starting off, but as soon as the bell rang, it was just downhill for me. Um, the Divas match, I don't know, Nikki Bella, or sorry, Brie Bella, no, Nikki, is just, just shitty, and, uh, just playing hot potato with the belt, just handing it off, back and forth, back and forth. It doesn't help anybody, it doesn't help the belt, and it doesn't help the two people they're passing it off to. But that's it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.